The Guardian News. The Guardian view on opposition to Trump, we can all do our bit editorial. In a recent article about the convulsive changes caused by Donald Trump's presidency, the Yale professor David Bromwich draws a distinction between the meaning of resistance and opposition to Mr. Trump and stresses the importance of the latter. According to the professor, resistance only comes into play when a previously legitimate government breaks its compact with the people. That point has not yet been reached under the new president. Yet Mr. Trump is doing his best to ensure that it is. To prevent that, the key now is opposition. Opposition takes multiple forms protests, political actions, legal moves, and more. But it is an indispensable responsibility when one party dominates so unscrupulously as in the United States. Effective opposition is what is most lacking in U.S. politics at this moment. If opposition remains ineffective, Mr. Trump's lack of restraint towards formal and informal constitutional checks will only be encouraged and he will break the compact that holds America together. These are desperately serious times. The legal argument about Mr. Trump's executive order travel ban on January 27 is arguably now the focus of this opposition. Late on Thursday, the Court of Appeals in San Francisco said it would not block the earlier ruling by a court in Seattle that halted the order. The case is now likely to go to the U.S. Supreme Court. That possibility is complicated by the fact that Neil Gorsuch has yet to complete his confirmation process. In its present 4 4 makeup, the court would be likely to maintain the status quo. With Justice Gorsuch on the bench that may or may not change. Those issues are fundamentally constitutional. At their heart is less the president's hostility towards predominantly Muslim states appalling though that is as his claim that his authority over immigration is so sweeping that the courts have no business challenging it. This is an enormous power grab by the executive branch of government, and it is made infinitely more dangerous by the character of the new president. Unfortunately both George W. Bush and Barack Obama paved the way for Mr. Trump's use of executive orders. America's legislative branch has failed to prevent this as they should have done. The judicial branch is quite right to block the White House's claim and to challenge it. Given Mr. Trump's dictatorial instinct and the damage to checks and balances, this case is clearly pivotal. If the Supreme Court were to uphold the lower courts it would be an important blow for the constitutional checks and limitations on which any state based on the rule of law, not just the U.S., depends. The role of foreign states in this process is inevitably a limited one. Yet opposition to Mr. Trump outside America has a part to play alongside the opposition inside it. Foreign opposition sets a mood and seeks to uphold the international order in ways that Americans on both sides of the argument need to hear. The question of whether Mr. Trump should be invited to address both Houses of Parliament when he comes to Britain on a state visit later this year is obviously in most respects a minor one. When compared with the fate of refugees seeking safety in the US, the President's schedule in the UK hardly counts. But that is no reason why the British Parliament should roll over and accord Mr. Trump an honour he has not earned and which offends many MPs and their constituents. It is barely two weeks since Theresa May went to the White House and offered Mr. Trump a shamelessly premature state visit. Now that offer is turning to ashes in her hands. The Commons Speaker, John Burkow, may have seemed to be speaking merely for himself when he opposed any parliamentary embrace for Mr. Trump earlier in the week. In fact, Mr. Burkow was speaking for more than 200 MPs who have signed a motion against the visit and, as we now learn, ministers had already begun planning for a Westminster free Trump visit anyway. They are right to do so, and Mr. Burkow has played a worthy role. MRS may presume too much when she imagined that a full-on Trump visit would help her cause or Britain's. Now the Westminster leg of the visit has been dropped. There will doubtless be further adjustments to keep disruption to a minimum. The truth is that the invitation should never have been issued. All this, though, has been achieved by opposition. Effective opposition works. It has done so in this small corner. It must do so in the courts, in the legislatures and on the streets of America too.